Purple Martins. You'll find the gourds in peaceful settings like on the bank of a calm lake, on quiet farms, down a country back road, in public parks, and in quiet backyards. The people that love Purple Martins build elaborate gourd racks and attend large festivals, all for just one bird, the Purple Martin. This has been going on for years. This house is a J. Warren Jacobs house, the first manufacturer of mass-produced Martin housing. Spaces in museums hold these special houses from the past and Purple Martins have been depending on man for nest sites for thousands of years and dates back to early Native Americans. If man was to suddenly stop providing nest sites, Purple Martins could literally disappear. Watch as we stop by Thurman Seaver's colony at his home in Tennessee. Everybody worries about the feed and the heat does. Of course, you usually get both at the same time. I tell you what, just looking at these few gourds and seeing how many you've got hung up, I'd love to be here around, you know, a month from now or just whenever it really gets busy with babies flying. About the 4th of July, late in the afternoon. Yeah, I bet you do have a show. It's a show. I've got. A few gourds that are in this now building. They're just now fixing to lay eggs. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Look at that. Eggs. Look at this, Emily. You got to see this one. Babies hatching day. Well, and this isn't nothing. Wait, wait till the babies start flying, too. This is. There's a nest that's uh, still all eggs. No hatchings at all. Mm hmm. Everybody thinks they're oh, those are already pretty, hatched, but they're not. It's... Look at all them birds flying around. Not really many babies yet. He's just got that many birds. Here is an active spring day at Larry Melcher's colony in Kentucky. The migration from South America is still bringing in new arrivals. At this stage, they are pairing up and claiming nest sites. Watching this, you may understand why a Purple Martin landlord would go to the trouble of hanging all the gourds each spring. Bird hobbies start out quite simple. Shown here, this male eastern bluebird finds a tasty treat of mealworms. An American robin finds out and takes all he can hold. Here's both male and female bluebird. A mockingbird has found out about the easy meals. Smith bluebird. There's dad over here on the trampoline. He had a worm, yeah, he's still got the worm in his mouth. Well, I tell you what, I'm sorry, but I'm out of time, and I'm gonna, we're gonna go look at the babies. Look at mom and dad, they're mad. He's gonna do it, that's right, that old human's gonna look. That old human's gonna look. Look at all these babies. I'm getting close to the days not to, not to open the nest. Look at them babies. How are you all doing? Huh? Oh my gosh. Let's get the camera in here. Well, good morning. Uh oh, there's four of you. Now, either one of you already fledged. We had five young. And I only see four babies, but aren't they cute? I think today's going to be the last day I'll get to look at them because I'll scare them away. Peek inside your nest boxes often. It's fun, and you will learn to help protect them from predators. So, 
Let's get back to the purple martins. This male bluebird is already in the area in this backyard in Kentucky. Just before purple martins arrive, we see tree swallows first. This map from the Purple Martin Conservation Association shows the spring migration and the arrival dates in the U.S. Tree swallows are pleasant birds to have in your yard and are only a worry at new sites that have not attracted returning purple martins yet. In Kentucky, tree swallows usually arrive before martins. This particular spring, a male purple martin shows up first. Using this map, you can tell when the first purple martins normally arrive in your area. There is a lot of joy when you see your first martin in the spring, but an experienced landlord knows it is time to help protect the native birds from predators, predators like the European starling. These are one of the purple martin's worst enemies. Starlings will steal nest sites from martins. Even with a vacant nest nearby, if a starling wants a site claimed by martins, they will toss out young, even killing adult martins to steal their home. Notice the body language. They are already up to no good. Backyard bullies. Make sure your nests have starling resistant entrance holes. English house sparrows pose the same danger to our backyard nest cavity seeking birds. Learn more about purple martins by visiting the Purple Martin Conservation Association website at www.purplemartin.org. Notice the body language of the tree swallow. Here is a replay of a close encounter with the camera. A tree swallow pair enjoying each other's company. Protect them from European starlings and English house sparrows. Peek inside your nest once a week. It's fun and safe for the birds because you may find signs of predators and you can help. Here is an adult female purple martin. Notice the starling resistant entrance holes in the background. Round holes allow starlings to enter and kill babies. Her mate a beautiful adult male, a bluish dark purple. So dark, from a distance they look black. He stands guard, successfully attracting his girl. She likes his nest. She is his. Adult males can also be identified by the clicking sound that only males make. Did you hear the clicks? Listen. Such beautiful birds. The landlord watches as he lands. Listen to the pleasant sounds a colony of martins make. A close flyby, caught by the camera. An amazing takeoff that only slow motion can reveal. An adult female comes in for a landing. Learn more about Purple Martins by visiting the Purple Martin Conservation Association website at www.purplemartin.org.
Another slow takeoff shows the grace and beauty of these birds that totally depend on man for nest sites. Accidentally trained by man dating back to early Native American Indians. So let's work on identifying the males, females, and young adult birds. These three birds, including the one landing, are adult male purple martins. It takes them two years to become dark all over. Therefore, they are after second year or ASY males. Let's try to find last year's babies or second year birds. These two light-colored birds are tougher to ID. Are they young males? Look for dark spots on the breast, belly, and under their tails below the rod they are clinging onto. No definite dark spots. The undertail feathers are light, so we will call these second-year females. Who's this guy on the left? Look how dark his throat area is. Are those dark spots? Let's keep looking. What's going to confirm this for me is under the tail feather below the perch rod. See the dark spots on the inside section of his tail? This is a subadult male. Last year he was a baby, a fledgling. This is his first year as a breeding adult. He is a second year male. Adult males are easy to spot. They are dark all over after second year. Uh-oh, this one has a bad leg. It is not an after second year adult male. Let's decide second year female after second year female of second year male. Throat is kind of dark. See any unmistakable dark spots? Not really. Look at the undertail section below the perch rod. Dark. That rules out a young female. Second year females have the lightest colors from their chin all the way below the perch rod. This is not a second year female. Turning her head. Her neck is not that dark. The brown in the lower tail feathers is consistent of markings on an after second year female. We can be 90% sure this is an after second year female. The guy on the right is a second year male. No definite dark spots on his chest, but look under his feet second-year male. A few dark feathers. Next year, he will come back as a beautiful, dark, after-second-year male. Purple Martins love a front porch. This after-second-year female has an unobstructed view of the sky from her porch. She listens and makes a quick check on her nest. Let's peek inside. Oh, yum yum. Dad has found a large meal. This is an Excluder 2 Starling Resistant Entrance Hole, used to keep larger starlings out. But Purple Martins, they pop right in. Let's watch the landlord do a nest check. Let me get this, camera this is me. what you can expect if you peek inside. All right, sweetheart. There you go. Yes, ma'am, there you go with your babies. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Yes, ma'am. Them babies are hungry and you're being a good, good mother. 
All right, I'll see you later. These are young baby purple martins, probably about two weeks old, waiting for mom to bring them food. Both mom and dad sharing the duties of feeding the baby birds. A curious dad peeks inside. Is everything okay? Listen to their language. Curiosity finally gets to mom. She's going in for a look. Mom goes back out as easy as she popped in. It's important for the young to have plenty of room to move around and stretch. Purple martins are the largest of the nine swallow species found in North America. They have a wingspan of 14 inches to 16 inches, a length of 7 inches, and weigh only 2 ounces. The adult male martin has blue, black, glossy plumage. Females and young are purplish brown, above with grayish white underparts. One-year-old males and females, known as subadults, can be identified by their unique plumage. Subadult males have one or more purple, purple feathers on their throats, stomachs, or undertail coverts, while subadult females are paler overall than adult females. Both subadult martins, or one-year-olds, and adult martins, those two years old or older, nest and raise young. A purple martin can live to be 13 years old, but most live only four or five years. Purple martins have a language. Listen how they communicate. That's the alarm call. Most likely, a hawk is in the area. This is a good example of why purple martins are safer in large numbers. There's a lot more eyes and ears keeping watch. Let's move back to earlier in the spring. This landlord is tossing crickets in the air to hungry martins. 
Purple Martins have such an urge to return to last year's safe nest sites, sometimes the weather gets cold for too long. If there are no natural occurring flying insects, Purple Martins can literally starve to death. Purple Martins have to be hungry to learn to feed like this. These birds have been trained. Normally, Martins feed high in the air. But if they are hungry, they will quickly catch on to this emergency drill. We'll, we'll see how this works. I'm going to try to shoot them right up in the air where the camera sees it. I don't know if y'all seeing that. Yeah, this might be better. All right, here we go. Oh, one got that. I don't know if y'all saw that, but it, I shot it low. But they're watching out for it and they caught it. Look at that. It isn't that neat. Well, that's about as exciting as it gets. Come on, y'all gonna have to jump out and get it. This is Martin Fest, an annual event at Victor Stoll's farm in Finger, Tennessee. We're at Victor Stoll's. This is all the Purple Martins. So my city's got 756 Purple Martins. Above us is that wire going across. This is the peak of summer breeding season, full of purple martins. I think I'm about out of quarters, Emily. Well, what was that to draw? And there is Mr. Victor Stoll answering questions about his massive collar. Oh, did that? Is that what happened? <laughs> yeah, look at here. Thank you, there. Come on, let's get this dog a round of applause. Purple Martin landlords gather from far and near to share tips with each other. Are you saying this? Are you saying this? Me? That's the end of me. Thank you, Lawrence. I appreciate it. That is. And a ball with the same style. Our friend out in Texas, old Emil. Some of you know Emil. Uh, he's coming up with a, a tub made kind of the same way. I think that's uh, many of you have seen these uh, fountain racks out here. And as far as I know, Herman, you invented those things, didn't you? Uh, or at least built them. They still build them. Everybody that I've ever heard said, man, I like that. I want that. And they several of them scattered around over the country. Uh, that's where good ideas come from. I don't know. Who that's Thurman Sieber speaking at Martinfest. Here we are approaching the end of Purple Martin breeding season. Those green donuts on the screen is birds taking off from overnight roost sites. It's the Purple Martin roost just north of Louisville. Several weeks after the Purple Martins have fledged young, meaning when the baby birds are old enough to fly from the nest, Purple Martins spend their nights in the safety of large numbers. Just These are called pre-migratory roosts. I mean, just a nice quiet street. It's 
some of the neighbors were shooting off fireworks, which I can understand. You don't know, you just think all these birds are going to poop all over your new car. Hi, I'm Larry Melcher. We're at Lily Dell Campground. This is in Tennessee, it's at Dell Hollow Lake. This is a Purple Martin pre-migratory roost. These Purple Martins leave colonies, like my backyard colony. And this is just a stepping stone on the way back to South America. What they do, they gather in large roosts. This roost probably has well over 100,000 purple martins that just sleep here overnight. And in the mornings they take off and they, you can see them on the local weather radar. They show up as a donut, a green donut on the radar. Oh my gosh. I mean, they're all over the place. Where you're looking at, they're back there. They're just all over. They're out there in the water, skimming across the top of the water. Look at that. Isn't that neat? Right on the water surface. Just, I mean, just everywhere you look. Well, it's way before sunrise and they're just starting to take off. Oh, here comes a big group. I heard the wind. It sounds like wind. Good grief. They just all of a sudden started taking off. Look at that. I guess it's time to go. Oh, this is neat. Good grief. Good grief, it sounds like wind. Look at all them purple martins. This is good. This is good stuff. Listen, there's some grackles in there. Wow, it's time to go. These are purple martins gathering before sunset. Look like they're starting to land. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm amazed. Look at this. Last couple minutes of this, I'll just let you listen. Hope it turns out good. Far away as I can see. Yeah. And now they're not as close, so they must be really. It's the tornado to... right over top of us. Yeah. But yeah, they go up as you know. But they're not really landing yet. No, they're still kind they're of thinking about it. Yeah. They're not really landing. Look at that. And that is the end of Purple Martin season. Large roosts like this end abruptly over just a few days. They head back to South America for the winter. Learn more about Purple Martins at www.purplemartin.org.